Okay, it's time for some reassembly of this thing. So we've cleaned all our parts up. Everything's all been cleaned up down there. We've made our new um, end cover for the hole that we're going to blank off. So basically, it's just a reverse procedure of of when we stripped it. It's it's, um, it's pretty basic boxes. Not too much, no real rocket science involved in this one. So, first gear and shaft we'll put back in will be the uh, drive for the uh, apron. So, just this shaft and gear go in and retained by an e clip. Now, just with these um, E-clips and circlips, pays to take note. Generally, on, a, on most of them, one side of the E-clip or circlip has a radius on it, and the other side is dead flat. Now, when that goes on a shaft, I'll pull this one back out again. So when the shaft's in its, in its position, the groove just there is for the E-clip. So what you want, you want the rounded edge, the radius, facing towards the gear that way. What, what the reason for that is, it gives a flat surface. We can get the camera in close. Um, up against the retaining edge of the circlip groove there, not a rounded edge. So you keep the rounded edge to the inside of the gear. In some cases, if you have it round that way, it can cause the circlip or the e-clip to pop off because you've got a radius edge coming up a very on a very small um, circlip groove there. Now, this is a case too so with some engines that have gudgeon pins. It's the same thing. You have the rounded edge to the inside of the piston so just a small thing but there are some occasions where they can pop off especially when the um, the, the part they're retaining is liable for a bit of um, side thrusting or anything like that he goes in e clip goes on So we just get a screwdriver, we just massage him into place with a screwdriver, just give him a bit of a thump. And then what we do then is, well, for the seal pick's the best thing, just check the to make sure it is properly engaged in the groove. Normally I'll just hold one, one of the ears with a seal pick and rotate the shaft. And double check them because it pays pays to otherwise it might pop off you've got to pull the whole thing apart again so. <laughs> okay that's that one in next one to go is the um, this one here this is the drive to the rack so this is the output gear of the apron so that was in there now we've got a our gear, we've got a gear that goes on here, slips in there, no wrong gear, <laughs> if I'm saying it's not rocket science. <laughs> That one there. That one there. Okay, so that one had 
a circlet. So the old circlet got a bit damaged, we had to stretch it to get it off, so I've got a, another circlet out in the box. This is just where it gets a bit tricky here, so we've got a key. So we're going to have to start the circle up on the end of the shaft. The set of my other set of circle pliers, I have it. They're at work, so I just have to make do with these ones. Ping it goes down the bottom of the box. Where else would it go? Tell you what, one more time, I'm going to go and get a different pair of circuit pliers. Okay, I've found me other pair of circuit pliers. They're not the best, but hopefully they're going to be better than the other ones. Success. We've also got a keyway which we've got to get in here as well. I think before I drop the key in, we'll just get a bit of bit of bit of the slippery stuff happening on these um, shafts. Okay, so our keyway goes in. goes that way. Not that it makes any difference but has the imprint on it from where the grub screw was holding it in place. Now our circlet we have to slide that along the shaft and get that into position. We'll tip this up you might get a better view of what's actually going on, probably not, but so I've got our circlip just here, so we're just trying to slide it along the shaft. There we go, click. And just to verify it is in the groove properly, same thing again, I just put the seal pick and I should be able to very easily stop the clip from rotating. And she's definitely in its groove. So we have our grub screw, our locking grub screw to go into the gear. So that would be find the grub screw. That's this one. This good nips all it needs.
Okay, so that's our output drive in place. And we've got our input drive in place down the bottom there. Just a bit of oil on that. Okay, so the next one to go in. Is the sliding gear. Now this gear sits on the shaft and slides backwards and forwards. So if it slides all the way forwards, it engages the longitudinal travel, and if it slides all the way back, it engages the cross feed, and in the middle, it's detented into uh, there's a neutral position. So, shaft, a little bit of oil in the gear. Before that goes in, it goes over there. It's just a, a, a lockout collar for when you're screw cutting. That's actually got to locate into this gear. What that does, it stops when this is engaged in the longitudinal travel. This gear locks out the capability to engage in your screw cutting. Same likewise when it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, so an E-clip to go onto that shaft. Same again, just watch where the radius is on the E-clip. Just check to make sure it's in its slot. So we have a spring and a ball detent. Drop a ball in. Spring. Make sure it's the same. Ring, and then just the little grub screw on top of the spring. Now, from memory, when we disassembled this, this grub screw was hanging out a little way, so. So it holds the detents here where this ball is, holds the uh, gear in position. So you've got neutral, cross feed, back to neutral, and longitudinal feed. Yeah, I don't like 
like the design of that. There's nothing stopping the screw coming up too far. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing to as get assembled. is the, the hand wheel for the longitudinal travel and this gear assembly. So this had an o-ring, this is a little o-ring um, groove inside this housing which stops the oil coming out from the end of the shaft. So I found another o-ring in the o-ring box. So I'll slip him in. all in so a bit of oil that's it she's in So this assembly will need a little bit of sealant on the mating surface where it bolts up to the housing here. So we'll just give it a bit of a, a, bit of a clean off. Well, it was clean, but a little bit of oil on it since we've been playing with it just then. So we have three, three cap screws. Clean off. So we just want to put a little smear of sealant on that. Doesn't need much, just a tiny bit, because it is below the um, oil line. So, All that needs, as long as your holes are covered, and a little bead around the inside. So, and we make sure our mark for our that reads on the scale um, on the hand wheel. Remember, we've got this graduated scale, so we want that mark to the top, which is just there. So three grub uh, three cap screws to go into that. Snip him up, just give it a feel. That's just tight on that new O-ring, that'll bed in. That's good. Okay, a little bit of excess elastic, there we'll just wipe him off.
a lot easier to get it off now before the stuff sets. Okay, so our handle wheel can go back on now. It's just a matter of lining up the roll pin. Just tip that over and I'll get a I've just got an Allen key up the up the bore of the shaft just so we're to help with the alignment. So she started into the shaft. Tap that home. Okay, that's that done. Now we have the keyway to go in our input drive pinion. Seated. Now, next part. see it will be the cover plate I'll just give that a clean off with some brake cleaner cover plate and find the missing cap screw that I've lost already. We rolled away somewhere. Here it is. So we get an Allen key for that because these are Imperial. Okay, so with this cover plate, we'll require just a very small smear of sealant on the rear of it. That's it, that's all it takes. So this will stop any oil wanting to ooze out the front of that shaft. Okay, so once again we'll just wipe off the excess. Heading away, probably. Okay. 
Okay, so now we have the um, this block. This is for the the lever to engage the your feeds. Now this sits above the oil level, so this can pretty well just go on dry. What I will do is just put a little bit of grease just inside the bore. And also inside the bore where it's the cross shaft goes. And he sits onto there. We have three cap screws to hold it in position. Just make sure I can get this in. No, we've got to assemble this gear at first. That's okay. We'll just rotate it around. So we want a bit of grease on this gear. Now there is a bolt which goes in underneath and that goes into a slot into here which pretty well locates the only position where the lever, it, it dictates where, where the lever can go. So. It's there. They just centralize it, just helps everything sit in square. Okay, that's all working nice and smooth. We can nip them up. Now this this detent bolt that we were talking about, he goes in there underneath. position for him to go into. Which is there. So we well I used to have a be able to fit a ring spanner on there before I put that plate there so Right, we'll just give it a bit of a nip up with a shifter. Present, shifter, depends where you come from, wrench. <laughs> Let's wipe off a bit of excess grease in there. So our screw cutting can only engage when this is in the neutral position. So 
So I think we're a tooth out on this gear. This gear should be pointing up a bit more. So if that's the only bozo moment, we're doing well. around another tooth. That's possibly better there. I think that's, I think that's got it there. If it's not in the right spot, the lockout, there's an interlock type mechanism inside, which one we were talking about before, which blocks out the ability to engage screw cutting while you're engaged in a feed. Okay, so there's traverse, crossfeed, you can't engage the screw cutting, neutral, you can engage the screw cutting, longitudinal, you can't engage the screw cutting, so until everything's in neutral. When screw cutting's engaged, you can't engage the feeds, so that's everything as it should be. I'll just tighten this. This little bolt up underneath there that detents that shaft. Clean off our greasy fingerprints. Okay, we just have this little ID plate as on the front. That is our completed apron.
we got the threading dial. Remember we swap sides. So our threading dial now sits on this side. Okay, so our new blanking plate with the bling on it, that'll stop any oil coming out of that shaft. That's our new oil level, so we're approximately an inch higher than the old level. So all that's left is to put the, um, the drive pinion in. But and the drive worm. Now I've got to make a drawing of those before I put them back in because if I want to make a spare now's the time to get all the dimensions for it as there is a bit of wear on the drive pinion so all good and we'll see you at the lathe when we fit this back up. Thanks for watching.